So that's your army, 187,000 soldiers in 140 countries today. The strategic resolve of our nation, the United States, is being challenged and our alliance is tested in ways we haven't faced in many, many decades. But I want to be clear. I want to be unambiguous. I want to be clear to those who try to oppose the United States. I want to be clear to those who wish to do us harm. I want to be clear to those around the world who want to destroy our way of life and that of our allies and friends. The United States military, despite all our challenges, despite our op-tempo, despite everything we've been doing, will stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. And the United States Army And the United States Army is America's combat force of decision. And when the political leadership of the United States decides to deploy its army, and when we show up on your turf, then you know the game's for real, and the stakes are for keeps. And the other thing you know is you're going to lose. You will lose to the American Army. Make no mistake about it, we can now and we will remain in the future, retain the capability to rapidly de deploy, and, and we will destroy any enemy, anywhere, anytime. So I stand here today, and I caution the enemies of America who doubt or misread our capability. Many enemies have grossly underestimated the United States and its people in the past. They've underestimated our national resolve They've underestimated our capability, our skill, and our combat power. And each made a fatal choice, which ended with their enrollment in the dustbin of history. The same will be true of any enemy that makes that mistake today or tomorrow. But while we are ready now, and will remain so in the future, we are also facing tough strategic choices and we are being increasingly challenged with very capable potential adversaries clearly acting in opposition of our interests. It's our aim to deter war, but if deterrence fails, we as an army, we as a nation, must be prepared to fight. Other countries, Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea went to school on us. They closely watched how we fought in 91 and 03. They studied our doctrine, our tactics, our equipment, our organization, our training, and our leadership. And in turn, they revised their own doctrines, and they are rapidly modernizing the militaries today to avoid our strengths in hopes of defeating us at some point in the future. Recently, a senior Russian official, ambassador to the United Kingdom, Alexander Kadamenko, he said, quote, the established world order is undergoing a foundational shakeup with the Crimea, Ukraine, and Brexit. He went on to call for the dismantling of NATO and the European Union. And he said, quote, Russia can now fight a conventional war in Europe and win. Russia is the only country that will remain relevant forever. Any other country is dispensable, and that includes the United States. We are endgame now, end quote. He said that all just 30 days ago. Bluster, hubris, Bravado? Or does he mean what he says? Does he believe it? And more importantly, do the leaders in the Kremlin believe it? Well, history tells us to be careful. It's always wise to believe foreign leaders' declaratory policy, as most nations tend to telegraph their strategic intentions. Unfortunately, war between nation states, in my view, is very unlikely to remain relegated to the history books. And because there is no higher authority, and because security is the primal interest of each state, conflict between nation states is virtually guaranteed at some point. And today, today we are in the middle of yet another major 
geopolitical change. Since the fall of the Berlin Wall, the U.S. essentially was the unchallenged global military, political, and economic power. And we were experiencing what some have labeled a unipolar moment. That is changing and changing fast. The United States is under significant challenge in Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. In Europe, we see a revanchist Russia who has modernized their military and pursued an aggressive foreign policy in Georgia, Crimea, Ukraine, and elsewhere. In Asia, we are in the third decade of the biggest global economic shift in five centuries, with the world economic center of gravity moving from a North Atlantic to the North Pacific and resulting in a rapidly rising China as a great power with a revisionist foreign policy backed up with an increasingly capable military. And we know from history that unipolar and bipolar international systems tend to be very stable. But we also know that multipolar systems are inherently prone to competition, confrontation, instability, and state-on-state -state wars. We are entering that multipolar future, and in fact, we've probably been in it for a few years. So unpredictable instability is the new normal. We are seeing the highest rate of instability since at least 1992, and that Russia sees itself in direct confrontation with the West, that China continues its robust military modernization program directly aimed at what they consider to be US, U.S. strengths with training exercises unprecedented in scope, scale, and complexity. This is an area of truly dramatic change with very significant military implications. Serious cyber capability is right now being developed and employed by major nation states, and it is entirely possible to inflict widespread damage on an opposing country's economy or military solely through the use of cyber tools. We see this in our daily lives now with hackers and cybercrime and imposters and the like. But that is a relatively minor nuisance compared to the resources of an advanced nation state like Russia, China, or even North Korea and Iran can bring to bear. The structure and organization of our army, both operational and institutional, may change drastically, and we must be open-minded to that change. But we are on a serious and deliberate campaign of learning to figure it out. And I can tell you, we need to figure it out pretty fast. And it's better for us to slaughter our sacred cows ourselves rather than lose a war because we are too hidebound to think the unthinkable. At this point, we can say a few things we've learned over the last year of study that we've done intensely about future high-end war between nation states or great powers. And the first, not surprisingly, is that will be highly lethal, very highly lethal, unlike anything our Army has experienced, at least since World War II. Additionally, the battlefield will be highly complex, almost certainly in dense urban areas and against an elusive, ambiguous enemy that combines terrorism and guerrilla warfare alongside conventional capabilities mixed with large civilian populations. So in short, the next 25 years are not going to be like the last 10, and they're not going to be like the last 25. The accumulating challenges we face and the changing character of war is unlike anything our current force has ever experienced in intensity and lethality. A noted classics historian recently wrote that he sees an increase in nationalism and regional arms races, unresolved territorial claims, ethnic and sectarian disputes, and a return to 18th century balance of power politics with spheres of influence. And he concluded that there's a light breeze in the air and it may turn into a storm. And he concluded at the end of his essay that a hard rain is about to fall.